People of Reddit with medical conditions that doctors don't believe you about. What's your story? I had an accident when I was around 12. TLDR fell from a fair height into water onto my back and got trapped. This is when I started to get strange horrendous leg pain. It would creep through my legs, burning, tingling and like pins and needles plus intense pain. Last for hours or sometimes a whole day, then just slowly disappear. My mum took me to the hospital once, because it happened, while I was at school and they freaked out at how much pain I was in. Her doctors told me to get fo, because it was leg cramps, and my mum told me it was, because I crossed my legs too much. Seven years later, I meet someone, and they push me to go see a doctor. GP sends me for court scans, find nothing. They refer me to a neurologist, they instantly send me for a MRI. Instantly finds out I tore my spinal cord in the original accident and the intense nerve pain is from a build up on fluid in the gap in the cord. It's uncommon, but not rare, but watching doctors google your condition in front of you with a WTF expression on their faces is kinda entertaining. For 6 years I got occasional headaches really bad behind one eye socket. It would happen every 4 to 6 weeks and unbearable headache would last 3 to 4 days solid. No Tylenol or meds worked. Told doctor it felt so painful it felt like it would feel better if I jammed a pipe through my eye socket for a leaf. We tracked my cycle. I went off noovering. Tracked headaches on a calendar. She thought it could be dehydration or related to the weather. Sinus. Nothing was a pattern. Year later, got a script from my primary doctor that, if I took the injection at the very beginning of a headache it would go away for good. But if I wasn't able to take it right away, like an hour later, the shot didn't work at all. I thought I had a sinus infection. Went to end in the town I worked. He treated me like a druggie, and he inspected my toes for needle marks. Because I came in, and had mentioned, that I thought it could be a cluster headache. He was a very old man and said I was telling him I had exactly all of the symptoms to a T of a cluster headache and most people don't have all of them. By his reasoning I was making it up. Yes I had done many web and searches trying to figure out any and all things it could be. The eye doctor did that picture thing to look at back of my eye. All was fine. So no tumor. Had an MRI and CAT scan. They came back fine. The neurologist just extended my script saying that as long as those meds work to keep it up. But I didn't want to manage it, I wanted to find cure. Went back to eye doctor a year later, still nothing found. Finally got my primary doctor to write me a referral for blood work. Ended up that it was my thyroid issue. Been on meds for over a year and a half and haven't had a headache in that entire time. So thankful to know what it actually was. For a long time it was a running joke with my husband that I was going to die young and I told family to perform autopsy that they would see I had a cantaloupe sized tumor behind my eye. Ha. Huh. Glad that's not the case though but seriously took a long time to figure out. Some doctors, not all, don't believe I'm allergic to Benadryl since it's an antihistamine. It's about 60 over 40 believe me to don't believe me. My throat closed when I took it for allergies once. Yes, I've been to an allergist who confirmed it for me. It's way more controversial than I would have ever thought, especially to pediatricians, when I disclose that I'm allergic for my son's records. When I was about the third grade, I was adamant that I needed glasses. It was hard to see, but when I went to the doctor, for some reason they assumed I wanted glasses, because all the smart girls in school had them. Partially true, but I could not see. Fast forward a few years, and I'm 15 trying to get my learner's permit for driver's edition. They tell me I can't start driving until I see a doctor about my eyes. I go and I get seen. They tell me I have a fairly severe case of refractive amblyopia. I'm blind in my left eye to all but colors and very vague shapes. My doctor tells me if I had caught it before I was around 10, I could have participated in therapy to reverse the damage to my eyes and the optic nerves. Because I hadn't, it's irreversible. No surgery, no corrective lenses, that's just my lot in life. I didn't have any trouble in school like kids with undiagnosed vision problems do. My eyes track correctly, there's no physical indicator I cannot see. So no one ever thought anything of my complaints and eventually I stopped complaining. It doesn't hurt me, but I have no depth perception, and it was disappointing to hear it can't be fixed.
vaginismus. It's where your pelvic floor muscles contract involuntarily when you try to insert something like a tampon, a penis, vibrator, or in this case a speculum. Most genus are not understanding of it, even if you're having a panic attack on the table. Not one doctor could explain to me what was going on, so I just believed for many years that I was either mentally weak or physically fucked up. I've been having gallbladder attacks for months now. I mean it felt like death was knocking on my door, and I was gonna. Apparently it couldn't be my gallbladder, because it didn't hurt the right way and there were no stones. Guess who has a diseased gallbladder? Only found out, after I absolutely insisted they do more testing. For months I had trouble eating, and was losing weight which as an already skinny guy was a problem. During this time any time I ate it felt like the food was catching in my throat and I eventually had to throw it back up. This led to me being sent through multiple doctors who all took blood samples then sent me to a psychiatrist to treat my forgulimia or other eating disorders. So for months I slowly starved while trying to explain to doctors that I do in fact want to eat it's just impossible for me. Finally, they sent me to do a barium swallow just to prove to me I'm perfectly capable of eating. This is where they finally found out I had a very severe case of the rare disorder achalasia. This is a disorder where the muscles in your lower esophagus spasm uncontrollably making it difficult to swallow. It's also a very rare disorder that is exceptionally rare in people under 20. I was 15. Eventually after a few more weeks on a liquid diet I had a surgery to resolve the issue and I was able to eat again. However, it was a very annoying and painful process to get to that point. I had Jaedia in college. Went to the nurse on campus, she gave me a condescending talk about trying Imodium first, before I bothered the all important student health with something like diarrhea. I was shitting blood and mucus, and yes I told her this. I then called my parents after the double doses of Imodium didn't work, and they came and took me to the local hospital. I shit in a cup for the doc at the hospital and he came back, and said I was dehydrated but fine. I had filled the cup with mostly blood and mucus. At this point my dad said something along the lines of, you must be fine, because two medical professionals said so. I cried and begged my mother to believe me, and she took me to a GI specialist in a larger city, who had me shit in a cup again. At this point I was emaciated, and shitting my brains out, if I took even a sip of water. He gave me flagell, and I live to tell about it. Asterisk. Throughout puberty I cried and screamed from the pain in my sternum. It felt as though something was pulling it back from inside, and I had a stabbing pain throughout my sternum. As a kid, my sternum was normal and perfectly fine, but it caved in during puberty. Along with this, several of my ribs got all fucked up and started taking on weird curves and dents. I went to several male doctors as a kid and they all said the pain was in my head, and that my ribs and sternum must have always been like this. I begged my mother to take me to a female doctor because old male doctors were horrible about telling females everything was in their head. She never did and I never found out WTF my body was doing. Now I have pectus excavatum and some fucked up shaped ribs. I have a diagnosis and my regular doctors are wonderful and supportive. But I have an inflammatory skin condition that leaves me with constant, painful, boils and abscess. Every few years, I have one that gets infected, and I have to go to the ear to get it lanced. It's painfully and psychologically traumatic every time. Maybe 4 years ago, I had a fever for a week. This is always a sign that the infection has gotten out of control, and I need IV antibiotics. I go to the ear, explain the situation to the Tridge nurse. Of course my fever has finally broken, as soon as I speak to her. But fine, she admits me and I wait. My name is called, I explain to the doctor. He rolls his eyes, and tells me it's called the flu. But fine, let's take some blood. Oh, the nurse mentioned you had something with your skin, let me see. I uncomfortably pull down my pants, and show the doctor my skin. He proceeds to tell me to stop shaving. I very clearly cannot, and do not shave, because those are just ingrown hairs. I very politely tell him that no, actually, I have this skin condition called HS, those are boils and I need a particularly bad one lanced. He proceeds to again, roll his eyes, and tell me I'm wrong, belittle me, etc. I walked out. I got my IV antibiotics from my dermatologist who was horrified. 
Thanks for almost killing me of sepsis ignorant misogynistic doctor. Aquagenic pruritus. It affects me every day. Some days are worse than others. I worked with a doctor for about a year on trying to find a cause. In the end he concluded with me water was the only common factor in my outbursts of extreme itching. Laughed as he left the room. That's the last time I saw him. I went home and google searched my symptoms. Saw a forum for people who had identical issues. Tried their methods and it has really helped. When I was 14 I woke up paralyzed. Was screaming my head off freaking out. Parents took me to her a few hours later when they realized I wasn't faking it. Doctors put me in mental ward, saying there's no physical reason she can't move, so she just believes she can't move. They finally do an MRI, I have epilepsy, it was a seizure type called Todd's paralysis, where you have a seizure in your sleep, and your brain and body lose connection for a period of time. Pain relievers that supposedly have really strong side effects like, being knocked out almost immediately will work maybe once or twice, then the rest of the prescription the side effects will hardly work, the pain relief does thankfully. When I had a tooth pulled I got some pills, that my mom said, would fuck me up, and how lucky I was. I just got really tired after the first pill. The second, not so much. Then I didn't feel much side effects anymore. When I explain my high tolerance to doctors I feel like they think I'm drug seeking. Same when lidocaine is wearing off within 30 minutes and I ask for laughing gas instead. My doctor flat out refused to believe I could have endometriosis because I was only 19. She gave every excuse from you have gas to it's in your mind. Then my appendix was bursting a few months later and when they pulled it out it was covered in endometrial adhesions. I had to have telaparoscopic surgeries to remove all the adhesions that had begun to cover all of my insides. Interstitial cystitis. It's a painful bladder condition that is poorly researched and not well known about. How I explain it is, when it flares up, it feels like I have a bladder infection. Burning, peeing lava, feeling like there's a rubber band around my bladder, all that. But I can't take antibiotics because there's no infection to clear up. And the prescription medications for it are really ivy. So I just have to wait it out. Anyway, I went to the doctor for 5 years who kept telling me I don't know what's wrong with you. Drink more water. Then I finally got a diagnosis from another doctor. Then it flared up really badly. So I went to visit another doctor who refused to believe the diagnosis. And made me do ste tests. Which I had already done about 10 times. As well as a pelvic exam. Extremely painful when I'm in a flare. And then told me I probably have pelvic inflammatory disease from an untreated ste. I said I've been in a relationship for 7 years. I've never had another partner. I don't have an ste. And he said something about how that doesn't matter. So I spent a week internally freaking out that my so cheated on me. Then they called back and said my results were totally clean. Now I don't even bother going to the doctor when I have a flare up. I currently have a hemorrhaging ovary. It's been hurting for 5 weeks. So bad I thought it was my appendix bursting. I went to my doctor after a week and he said it was a UT. I said it's different than that feeling as I had a lot of uterus in my life. But I tested positive for it, I usually do, and he gave me antibiotics. Well it kept getting worse, and I went back in, to do a urine culture and he also ordered an ultrasound. I did both and my doctor's nurse calls me back in a panic saying I'm bleeding in my ovary, and need to see a gin immediately. I couldn't get a hold of any in the three offices I called, so I called back, and she told me to go to the ER. I spend 5 hours in the air and the bitchy nurse tells me it's just a period that's how they feel hun. I've had my period for 13 years and even after surgeries and giving birth and miscarriages and an abortion I've never felt pain like this before in relation to a period. She also said IBS could cause it but that is something I never have had problems with ever. So today I finally get in with a gym and they are going to just monitor it with ultrasound every 3 weeks. I can't stand for very long. Have a hard time keeping up with my daughter and lost my job. I honestly just want them to remove the ovary. My tubes are gone and my aunt died of ovarian cancer young. I had a bout with cancer last year and to be brushed off with this when they know what's wrong is awful. This was when I was a kid. I had what my parents called growing pains. Basically my legs would ache at night to the point I was screaming in pain. 
Happened from about 7 to 10 almost every night. I know it wasn't imagined as I remember the pain to this day. My parents took me to the doctor multiple times. Small town. One doctor. And each time he sent me home with growing pains aren't real. Now what really fucks me off is I don't care of the term we used for it wasn't a thing. I was in agony for 3 years and he simply sent me away. It stopped happening eventually and never knew what caused it in the first place. I've had a nerd doctor lecture me about having PTSD for sexual assault because it's a choice to put yourself in those situations. Military are the only ones with legit PTSD according to this nerd doctor. He was seeing me for a severe panic attack I had. Fibromyalgia is my disease. Most doctors will believe you at this point as it has been recognized officially for a few years now. But a lot of older doctors still believe it's some made up disease older overweight women have because they are too lazy to exercise. Or they think you want painkillers. As a relatively in shape 23 year old, it's always interesting to watch people's faces when I tell them I have it. I've suffered from fibromyalgia since I was 16 and have always been active to some degree. In high school that was swimming and running, and nowadays it's brisk walking and weights, but whatever. Either way it's basically hell, when I flare up. My so has had to carry me from the bathtub to the couch before, because I couldn't walk. It's debilitating. And it's frustrating as fuck, when you have an old out of shape man in a white coat telling you all you have to do to feel better is work out. Like he's working out helps long term. But I'm not working out, if I'm flared up. It's just not happening.